Our last video examined the building blocks of a group, and without rigorous proof, we saw some of the beauty of abstract algebra as we demonstrated the group of reflections and rotations of an equilateral triangle, commonly called D6. In this video, we hope to provide you with a general understanding of the order of a group and the order of the elements contained therein. Remember, using an infinite set of integers, we see the operation of addition takes two of these elements and maps them to another element. This is a closed binary operation. If we pick a subset of integers, such as 0 through 11, and use the familiar example of a clock, we create a group with a finite number of elements. It is a group because it holds these four properties. Closure. We combine any two of our elements together, and the answer is still an element. Associativity. We can perform the operation on our elements by grouping them in different ways, and the final answer does not change. Identity element. There must be an element in our group that leaves the other elements unchanged. Finally, inverse elements. All elements had an inverse element, and the answer when combining an element and its inverse was the identity element. We then selected only three elements and placed them on the clock face. Instead of using them as numbers, we used them as vertices for a geometry, in this case an equilateral triangle. And with that triangle, we discussed the motions of symmetry. Because we can select an infinite number of integers to create our clock face, there are an infinite number of these types of groups. We call these groups additive groups of integers. And for our example, note that the number of elements was 12. This is usually written as z slash z12. So let's explore some of the interesting things about the groups using our example, the additive groups of integer, modulo 12. First, there is something we call the order of the group. That is simply the cardinality, or the number of elements we have in our group. Since by definition we selected 12 to get this group, we see that the group order is 12. We also see we can add the element 1 to itself and get the element 2. Taking that answer, we can add the element successfully and get 3. We can continue this process, very similar to raising an element to a power in multiplication. We do this until the first time we get all the way back to the identity element. The smallest number of times, or power if you will, that we raise an element to and first get back to the identity is the order of that element. In this case, the order of 1 is 12. When under an operation there is an element that generates all of the other elements of a group, we say that the group is cyclic and that that element is a generator of the group. Now let's look at the element 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 2 again is 6, then 8, and 10, and then back to the identity. 2 has an order of 6, and since we did not generate any odd elements, we know that 2 is not a generator of the group. The same scheme can be seen for the element 3, so 3 has an order of 4. And for the element 4, 4 has an order of 3. Something interesting happens when we get to the element 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. And then because of modulo addition, 10 plus 5, we go right past the identity and get 3. But like successive powers, we add another 5 and we get 8. And this continues. And finally, back to the identity 0. 5 has an order of 12. It is also a generator for this group. As 12 is the lowest power, we raise 5 to and get back to the identity. 6 is rather easy. 6 plus 6 is the identity. It's its own inverse. 6 also has an order of 2. 7 also has an order of 12 and is a generator. 8 has an order of 3. The element 9 generates 9, 6, 3, and 0. 9 has an order of 4. The element 10 is an order of 6. The element 11 also generates the group, as successfully you can see it's just like a countdown. So 11 also has an order of 12 and is also a generator of the group. Now, hopefully you made some notes on which elements generated the group. 1, 5, 7, and 11. The interesting thing here is 1 is the basic building block, the unit number if you will, and all other are prime numbers. But what happened to 2 and 3? Well, you can see that both these actually divide the order of the group. These are not relatively prime to the order. Comparing the order of elements within a group to the order of the group itself helps us understand the structure of that group. So for our additive group of integers, modulo 12, let's review all of the elements and their orders. 0, the identity element, by definition has an order of 1. Notice that the order of every element is a factor of 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So if the order of an element is the lowest power we raise, or number of times we perform our operation to get the identity, 
such as a to the power of k is the identity, then raising an element to any multiple of that order will continue to give us the identity. 2 raised to the 12 is just 2 raised to the 6 done twice. So 2 raised to the 6, 12, 18, 24, and so on is still the identity. This rule holds for every element. Any element a raised to the power k is the identity if and only if the order of a divides k. Because of this theorem, we can see that the order of an element must be a factor or divide the order of the group. But this is an if and only if statement, and we will only ever get back to the identity for certain groups. Remember our group of all the integers? If we were to raise 1 to any number, we will never get back to the identity. So, be careful. An element does not always have a finite order. One final thing, and we can see this for every element in our group, but we will focus on the order of 4, which was 3, 0, 4, and 8. These were the three points we used for our other group, D6, the motions of symmetry of an equilateral triangle. The additive group of integers, modulo 3, is a group in itself. It has a closed binary operation, associativity, and identity elements, and every element has an inverse. For this, we say the set, which we will call H, 0, 4, and 8, is a subgroup of our group G, 0 through 11. We will explore more about subgroups in our next video. See you in that video, and don't forget to like down below, and please help the Group Garage channel grow by subscribing and telling a friend.